Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Photoshop video with another sunset image from Northern Norway. So the idea for this shot is to apply a little more brightness overall and of course restore those warmer sunset colors. The cool thing here is most of the editing will be done in the camera raw editor, which means this can also be done in Lightroom as well. So without much more talking, let's jump into it. By the way, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find the link to it in the description of this video. So first off, I'm going to change the profile. This means I'm going to use Adobe Landscape, which will give me some more base saturation. And that's exactly what I want for this shot. Then let's go through the basic tab. For the white balance, I do want to make the scene a little warmer. That means I can simply push the temperature and you can see how those colors change in the sky. That's looking much, much better already. Now I do want to further improve those sunset colors by bringing up the tint, which just introduces some more pink tones. Just like that. For the next step, let's improve the brightness. You can see the histogram does look pretty good, but on the left side, there is a rather large gap, which I want to fix. So first off, let me just try and bring up the exposure very, very slightly. I don't want to raise the highlights because then I would end up with less detail in the sky, which is not what I want. So let's reset that. Instead, I do want to bring up the whites. Let's bring it up like that. And I think I also want to raise the shadows a bit, making the darker parts of the image a little brighter. That is looking pretty good. So now we did lose a bit of detail in the sky, but I will fix that later with a few local adjustments. For now, however, I do want to add a little bit of texture, just like that, and some vibrance. By the way, you might notice this image is kind of looking not that sharp, and that's because it's not really in focus. That really sucks, but I still like how the colors in this image look, so I'm going to edit this anyway. Just so you know, if you're editing with me at the moment and you are wondering why this image looks a bit blurry. But let's keep on going. Next up, let's do the local adjustments. First off, as I said, I want to change the sky and reveal a little more detail in here. Therefore, I'm just using a linear gradient and pull it straight down like this. That's looking good. In here, I'm just bringing down the exposure revealing some more of those clouds up there. All right, that's looking really good. Maybe we need to adjust this linear gradient a bit, but I think that's a good spot. Then I do want to add a little bit of glow on the bright part of the sky. Therefore, I'm going to use a radial gradient and just create a rather thin radial gradient like this. And for those glow effects, I'm making sure the mask is overlapping something like the mountains in the distance to get some kind of light bleed effect. So now with this radial gradient, I'm going to bring up the whites for some more brightness. I'm also going to introduce some blacks for the glow. And I'm going to decrease the dehaze, which will further improve the glow effect. All right, then let's also introduce some colors in here by bringing up the temperature. I'm going to push it quite a bit since this works really, really good on this shot. Nice. And there we have the local adjustments already. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see we didn't change that much, but we do have much more fitting colors for the scene. And also those pink color tones are now way stronger. So next up, let's do some color grading. First off, I do want to head into the curves tab. For this shot, changing the red tone curve works quite well. I especially want to target the highlights, so I'm picking this point in the upper right corner and I just drag it to the left. This will give us some more red tones, especially in the highlights. If you don't want to have it in the mid-tones or anything, I can create another point right here and just drag it down slightly. So that is a very, very subtle change, but I think it works really good on this shot. Next up, I'm skipping over the color mixer because we don't need to change anything here. Instead, let's head into the split toning. 
Here I'd want to apply a warm color tone for the highlights first, because that is always working great with sunset images. So I'm going with an orange hue for this shot. And let's pump up the saturation. And we get those lovely sunset colors. That looks really, really good. Let's do the same on the midtones. Again, I'm going with a rather warm color tone, maybe in the yellow range. And let's bring up the saturation. Here, however, I don't want to go as crazy as on the highlights. Then for the shadows, let's apply some colder color tone. Somewhere in this range, almost going into the pink colors. And here I again want to use a very low saturation. Perfect. Finally, let's head into the calibration tab. Here I just want to bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation. Again, this will just improve the sunset colors. So everything's looking pretty good at the moment. Then, of course, I also want to apply a little bit of sharpening. So let's bring down the radius. Let's increase the details. And of course, apply some masking and increase the sharpening. Perfect. I do have a feeling this shot is a little bit skewed. So I want to try and fix that. But it seems like it's because of some lens distortion. In this case, I'm heading into the optics tab. I'm switching over to manual and just play around with the distortion slider and try to get a straight horizon here. It might not be possible, but a little straighter will look a lot better. Maybe like this. And of course we need to crop the image slightly now, but that's not a big deal. Okay, the gap at the top can be filled in Photoshop. So for the next step, let's open it up in Photoshop. All right, let's fix the gap first. Therefore I'm using the lasso tool and I'm just creating a very, very rough selection around the gap. Then I'm hitting Shift F5, select Content Aware and hit OK. That's pretty good. Then let's clean the sensor spots using the spot healing brush and just brush over all those little dots. I can also remove that ship on the left side. It's a little distracting here. Perfect. And maybe clean up the foreground as well. Okay, that looks really cool. Next up, let's do some final editing here. I think I want to enhance the glow on the right some more, so let's add a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, grab the brush by pressing B, lower the brush opacity to around 10%, and I'm picking the color tone from this area by, mo by holding down the Alt key and clicking in here. Uh, maybe let's make this color a little brighter. All right, and now I'm just painting in a little more glow just over the mountains. It's looking really good. We could apply a stronger glow effect by using a hard light layer. So let's switch the blending mode to hard light here and again use the same brush to add in glow. All right, that should be enough. So I really don't want to overdo it. I think the contrast looks pretty good. The brightness as well. Maybe the colors could use some more saturation, but I'm not really sure about that. I do want to give it a try, however. So let me merge all those layers. And then I do want to take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. So first off, we have this polarization effect right here. You can see this will make the colors a little stronger but I think this might be a bit too much. So let's play around with the strength. And that's a good spot right there, I guess. Then let's add another filter right away. And I do want to give the skylight filter a try, which should help me improve the sunset color some more. This is a very strong filter, so be very careful here. Just want to add a little more color, just like that. Okay, and then I do want to add one more filter. I just want to test the brilliance warmth effect on this shot. Just raising the warmth very slightly. 
I still want to have blue color tones in here, but this looks pretty good this way. All right, then let's just apply it like that. And here we have the finished image. Very cool. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you guys for watching this video.